This is Twit. So Microsoft has a new head of research, Eric Horvitz, and Dave Gershkorn at Quartz took a close look at his role. Dave joins us now. Welcome, Dave. Hi, how's it going? Good. It's great to have you back. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, so yeah, for, thanks for having me. First of all, give us a, a sense of Horvitz's background. He has a very rich background in AI. Is, I'm assuming that's why he was chosen for this role. Yeah, definitely. So uh, Eric has been at Microsoft for about uh, almost 25 years now. Um, he has been there since kind of the first development of Clippy, believe it or not. That was one of his <laughs> first uh, projects. Uh -oh, at, uh, at the should we be worried? <laughs> No, no, no. He's okay. come a long way. But right, uh, right. so that was one of his first things at uh, at Microsoft, and now he's uh, been focused on a little bit more on on the product side, um, developing research. So, um, the suggested reminders feature that came to Cortana, where it will look through your email and then be able to tell you, you know, what you've promised to do, and then remind you about that by you know looking at all the language um, and everything that you said. Um, that's something that came out of his work um, at Microsoft Research. And he's been working on a lot of big picture things as well, which is why I think that they uh, wanted to bring him up. He's really interested in looking at systems that, that learn over a long period of time. So um, something that can, um, you know, monitor what, you, what your uh, habits are, how you like to interact with people, um, how you interact socially, and be able to help you based on that. Uh, it's something that it's kind of representative of that um, is this game that he built. So he, um, it was like a kind of a, a trivia game. And um, if there was two or three people talking uh, and another one came in, it would actually stop the game and say, hey, do you want to join? Um, because it, you know, it was trained and taught that, you know, people like uh, to be included in, in, in a game or interaction. Hmm. So he has, and, uh, you know, a lot of his background really seems to kind of, obviously it involves AI and that's why Microsoft is bringing him in, but also it involves kind of this thought around the ethical transformation or evolution of AI. Can you talk a little bit about that and about, I, I mean, I have to imagine this is of, of big importance to Microsoft, obviously, if they're hiring him. Of course. So Eric was one of the uh, first people from the, you know, bunch of researchers I spoke to that was actually really interested in this idea of AI safety. He was the president of AAAI, uh, AAAI which is a industry trade organization. Um, and it is kind of the largest one. It, it dictates uh, a lot of the kind of, it has the, the, the pulse of what's going on in the AI community. So he was the president from 2007 to 2009. And he made the whole theme of his presidency, what happens when you put AI out in the wild. Now, 2007 to 2009 was before a lot of the AI boom that we had today. Um, it was before, you know, Google started putting machine learning in everything. It's before all these research labs started cropping up. Um, so, and it was before AI was in really the wild at all. So he kind of saw this coming and the, the, the people I spoke to said that he was one of the first to, to see that this, this boom was going to come. And it's, it's actually funny because Andrew Ng, who used to be the, um, uh, chief scientist at Baidu was actually there and gave a talk on on at in the this conference that he held in 2009, the Asilomar conference, um, and he gave this talk on neural networks. And that conference is kind of one of the first times that people took AI safety out of academia and started thinking about it in what happens if this is actually in the real world. So he took that and then he kind of continued it into this 100-year study at Stanford, which uh, started in, I believe, 2014. And he's self-funding that with his, uh, with his wife. Um, and now he's a part of this partnership on AI, which is um, Apple, Amazon, IBM, Facebook, um, and Microsoft. And they are, and um, I think I said it got everybody. And it's basically best standards, practices uh, on how to keep AI unbiased and safe and accountable and transparent. Um, so he's been uh, pretty critical in, in all of those roles. And it's something that uh, he's, he's pretty well known for in the industry. There's so many issues with the ethics of artificial intelligence. There's like what you were saying, bias, you know, police uh, using algorithms and, you know, people getting arrested, just, you know, not in 
like algorithms being somehow racist when they, when they really aren't, but it's just yeah. unintentional. We see it in Facebook, we see it in Google. And then there are these big questions that I hear all the time. And you wrote about this one, uh, the idea that AI could possibly diagnose cancer, maybe a stage earlier, save someone's life. Uh, but to do that, they would have to go through, just by going through someone's search uh, queries. And then that brings up this kind of like, oh, I don't know if, you know, I, I want someone going through my search queries. Like how, how yeah. would he look at something like that big question? Like how would they look at that? So it's actually interesting you mentioned diagnosing through search queries because that was him. Uh, at Microsoft Research, he uh, led a team and they looked through um, anonymized um, Bing data, I believe. And they were able to identify um, people who they had they confirmed that users had, um, I, I believe it was prostate cancer. Um, and then they kind of looked through this single user's search history and they were able to find searches that correlated and detect cancer earlier. And it was written up everywhere at the times. Um, uh, we wrote about it. So it is something um, that he seems to not really have a, a problem with doing, but it's worth mentioning that that's all anonymized data and and once you train that model um it is trained and you don't need to add new user information so it's not like they're constantly scraping the web um looking for new user data to use um and it's also i guess worth saying that um all the bing users consented to having their anonymized data used um by used going to the service um so it's it's I think his line is is right about there. I mean you're he, you're not singling out people and and um, you're not using people's identity to do this, but you are using their anonymous aggregated data. So that brings up a good question. Like uh, you know, is there a lot of people that are just like, oh, that sounds bad, looking at my search queries? When if you really think about it, you know, we're not delving into what you're saying. Is it's not an you know, it's it's not constantly searching and it's anonymized. And it, are they dealing with that a lot? Just people's generally like, I don't want to call myself a luddite, but that general just fear of anything when you say artificial intelligence. Totally. Yeah, I, I think that something that is really coming to. Uh, the discussion in the AI community right now is um, how do you keep data sets private? Um, there's this new kind of in the last decade idea of differential privacy and, and a, a data set, um, which is, you know, that could be everyone's search history, that could be um, everyone's login, um, you know, or, or it wouldn't be their line, it would be everything else. It would be, you know, what they clicked on, when they clicked on it, how often they click on things. Um, there's a, it's a formula and something can be differentially private, which means that um, no matter what happens, you can't find their identity based on that uh, on that data set. Um, and it mean, or it, it rather it means that you can't um, adding one person wouldn't make any difference, and adding one person wouldn't make any difference, and, and subtracting and doing anything with one user doesn't really uh, mean anything, and you can't identify that user from their data. Um, so that's been a, a, a big talk, and how do you apply that to, to different data sets? And it, it's really a, a ongoing conversation. Nobody really has a, a great answer, and everyone has kind of their own ethical code. So I think what the industry is really looking for are standards, and that's something that that uh, Eric Corbett has really been pushing for with the partnership on AI. And and that is where you're going to see a lot of the progress on this uh, move forward. And I, I mean, I imagine anyone that's playing in the AI sandbox these days, of which there are a lot of companies playing in that sandbox, they all want to be leaders in this. Do you think that this sets Microsoft up I mean, based on his historical uh, kind of uh, experience around AI, around the, the, the uh, you know, his attention to, to ethics, um, his history around all of this stuff? Do you think this puts Microsoft in a good place to help kind of inform and advise uh, those standards around AI going forward? I think it does. Um, what this kind of gives that it that uh, Microsoft that it didn't necessarily have before is kind of their biggest name in AI leading the general research. So he, he's at the head of all research um, apart from the uh, Asia, Asia Research Lab. And so he is, and he's also setting up a new AI effort within uh, the Redmond Lab, which is, and what they are meant to do is to take all of the research and see what products it's going to fit into um, in a much more formal way. Um, and I mean, 
he's one of the, the people that is kind of, uh, he's like kind of the first wave. He's been working on this for almost 30 years now. He's pretty well respected in the industry. Um, it definitely gives Microsoft a little bit more clout in the research community. Um, you know, Microsoft, ha- I mean, uh, Facebook has Yama Kuhn, um, leading theirs. He's, he's a super big name. Um, one of kind of like the foundational people. Um, Google has Jeff Hinton advising. They have like kind of a, a big name. And of, of course, uh, Jeff Dean, um, who was really formative in the, the Google Brain project, um, as well as Andrew Ng helped start it with a, you know, a whole host of other names. So uh, Microsoft kind of has their own, um, you know, kind of like original researcher leading the, the team now. I think we talked about the Horvitz, the study that you were talking about with cancer research, but we have some questions in the chat room um, about, and maybe we should do a little more explaining before uh, we go on. What was it about the search that people searches that made them, uh, that made them realize that they were, uh, that they, they, to, how were they able to diagnose them with cancer? Was it things that they were saying like, this hurts, that hurts, or was it things they were buying, searching for? What was it exactly? Um, so I think it was, a host of things. It was it was kind of all of the above. It was um, what they were searching in terms of uh, just for maybe medical advice, um, and it makes me think of the the story where um, the target was able to determine that a woman was pregnant before she even knew um, because they were able to see what she was buying. Um, so it could be something like that. I I, I can't remember specifically what the um, what all the, the data points were, but it was pretty much comprehensive being searches. So um, they, they analyzed everything. How does Microsoft's approach here compare to um, other companies who are obviously working on furthering their AI initiatives? Um, I mean, are they all, I don't know, is it a level playing field at this point or is it really open for any anyone to really come along and dominate in this field? I think that there are people who have a little bit of an advantage. Google has obviously put a lot of people on this. They have thousands at this point uh, of engineers that are working on machine learning. Um, but Microsoft also has a lot of people working on this and they, they have been for a while, but they just haven't, I guess, been really as, as, as open about it. Um, Microsoft's goal now, as uh, Eric Harvest told me, is to work on things that will go into products, but also what he calls game-changing ideas. Um, he wants to make AI be able to do more than one thing at once. He wants to make it more general. He wants to make it more applicable in social situations. Um, he wants to make it more aware of what it can and can't do, which is something that he has uh, worked on for a number of years. So I think he is looking really big picture and kind of what can he work on that has the most impact and kind of make Microsoft this dominant force. Right. Right. Awesome. Well, we'll see how this develops. Uh, Dave Gershgorn, yep. and of course, Quartz, that's QZ.com. Where can people follow all your work online? Uh, so I'm on Twitter, Dave Gershgorn, uh, easiest last name in the world. Um, <laughs> but Pretty much how it story, sounds. When you exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, just go to QZ.com. We're all good. You, you'll find me on there. Yeah. We read your stuff all the time. Thank you so much <laughs> Thanks, for joining Dave. us tonight. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Have a good one. All right. You too. You too. See you later.